Please welcome Nicole to the show and neurosurgeon and renowned stroke expert, Dr. Neil Martin. And I know everyone watching right now, you're wondering what happened to John. Well, you know what? Let's ask him himself. John, come on out. And I'm living. Back. I'm back. Obviously, John, you have some residual effect on the left a side bit, of your body. Yeah, but, still do. But it really seems like you have slowly been able to, to reteach yourself how to walk it, and, and think. And you really do. Everything that you take for granted just because it just it's automatic. Go reach for a, a glass, lift it up, you know, turn it. It's all just a bunch of signals from the brain to the muscles to do stuff. And it's just you have to relearn everything again, it's crazy. And let's show everyone really quickly, Dr. Martin, the innovative technique that you used. And if you think about it, blood pressure is an issue for hemorrhagic strokes because the more pressure on those weak blood vessels wall, the more likely that it will rupture, which is of course what happened in John's case. So we're seeing a small blood vessel in the brain that has become weakened by the effects of high blood pressure over the years. And when it ruptures, the red blood cells leak out of the blood vessel and actually form a mass, almost a tumor of clotted blood inside the brain. Now we used to operate on this by doing a craniotomy. So we would make an incision about that big. We'd make an opening in the skull about that big and we'd have to make an incision through the brain tissue to get to the clot and remove it. And we always were concerned that the damage done by the surgery itself might negate the benefit of getting the blood clot out of there. So now? So now we've, we've developed a minimally invasive technique. We make a small incision right over the eyebrow, a burr hole, an opening in the skull the size of a dime or a nickel, and then using, using an endoscope just like this, we go in through the opening, it's directed using a, a computerized system, a GPS-like system that directs this right into the center of the clot, and then in a graduated fashion, we increase the suction pressure until the blood comes out. So, so here you're you not see, cutting through the brain, right? You're just not, literally no. sucking that clot out of we're there. We're displacing the brain with this catheter. It goes through a relatively silent area of the brain, and the clot is removed. And then once, once the clot is removed, we use this endoscope. We put the endoscope through the catheter, and then we're able to look in the cavity, there's a light source associated with it, and we can make sure that there's not any further ongoing bleeding inside the cavity. And, and John, <laughs> here you are before us. I know that you've had a massive road to recovery. And you mentioned that massive craniotomy. I mean, I'm looking at you, and I'm, I'm trying to find any scar, any evidence anywhere. Me too. And I don't see it. Yeah. I don't. Do you see no, it? I, no, I don't. Do you I all don't see it? Either. No. I mean, you had a massive brain surgery, yeah. essentially. So the, the, the guy in the intensive care unit who said, we better do surgery, the next day came to me and said, look, I thought we were doing surgery yesterday. And I said, we take did. a careful look at his eyebrow because he, could, he almost couldn't see the incision right over his eyebrow. Wow. So the new technique, this minimally invasive technique, really has changed things. And, and Nicole, tell me a little bit about what it means to you to have your husband here with you. I know oh. watching the video. You know, he's, he's doing great. His recovery has far exceeded everybody's expectations. I, you thought you were going to lose him. I really did think that we were going to lose him. Yeah. And, you know, I'm so happy that you got the treatment that you needed. That's a really important takeaway here. We always talk about thinking fast yeah. with stroke-like right. symptoms. You know, if someone, you notice they have a droop on one side of their, their face, so F, face. You know, if you ask them to smile, you'll notice a, a droop. And, and that's one of the most common things that you'll see is, is just you'll look at someone and you're like, ah, you, you just don't look the same. You can even have people just put their arms out. And right. if you notice an arm drift, and then speech, speech was slurred. Speech should not be slurred in a 38-year-old. Yeah. If it's new, that's a problem, and that's the T, time. Call 911. Your local EMS should know to take you to the appropriate stroke center. Because this is, that procedure I'm telling you right now is not happening at most hospitals in the country. It just isn't. Well, so. it's, it's, still, it's still an experimental procedure, and it still remains to be absolutely proven that it benefits everybody with a stroke of this kind. But we've seen some very encouraging early results, and we're continuing to study this with funding from the NIH. Hey, I'm Dr. Travis Stork. Press here to subscribe to the doctor's YouTube channel, and press here to help reduce tension.